My name is uh, Jens Christian Trier. It's not super easy to pronounce unless you maybe are German. Uh, I'm Danish, Swedish, and again, living in Finland, lived in the UK before, and I'm the chief operating officer at We Make Change. I've been a part of We Make Change for around four years. It was founded four years ago, and um, I was a part of it on and off. And um, since last year, I've been um, full-time as a volunteer because our whole team is actually volunteers. So we're two people full-time volunteering, the CEO and I, and then we are powered by part-time volunteers. Um, we're currently working on our business model and um, sharpening as much as possible uh, so we can also make our uh, enterprise a sustainable one. We used to be a charity, but now we're actually a social enterprise because we believe that's the future. My background is in political science, and I always had an idea that I wanted to make an impact in the world in some way, but I always thought that the only way I could really do that would be um, to be perhaps a politician or work for a government institution or maybe some big NGO around the world. So that's kind of what I focused on a lot during my studies. Um, and I had a great interest in Model United Nations, if you ever heard of that. So that was role playing depending to solve or pretending to solve the issues of the world um, through writing resolutions for the other students in a fake, uh, for instance, Security Council. But what was very inspirational attending such conferences was that there are so many people, in this case, students who wish to gather and discuss different topics and find solutions, even though it's not real. What we do is just a role play. And in one of these conferences, I met uh, James Sancho, who is the CEO of We Make Change, four years ago in uh, New York City of all places. And we have been working together since then. And I'm really delighted to work full time with him now um, with We Make Change to transform the world. And um, so this is the agenda for today. Um, I already went over my background. So one thing I want to touch uh, upon it first will be like the sustainable development goals because that's kind of like the background framework that's like our mission and the big goal of we make change then i want to quickly mention the different responsibilities so going back to my political background then i want to mention or talk about how we want to transform the whole system in the world uh, so all businesses in the future are mission driven then i want to go into the volunteering versus change making um, there are some connotations to volunteering and then there's what we call change making, which we think is a bit different. Then I wanna talk about how we make change works and first for social enterprises, but then also for change makers, just to, because I've been told that are also change makers here or people interested in volunteering. So I'm gonna go and discuss the two perspectives for you. Um, and then I'm gonna bring out some case studies. First, I just want to say our, we are a platform we make changed um, and our platform has three aspects to it. We work with individuals, so the change makers, people who want to use their skills to make a change in the world. Then we work with social enterprises, so organizations who are making an impact around the world but who are looking for ways to grow this impact so they can scale and change the world at the same time. Then lastly, we work with companies, mainly big corporations. We've also worked with universities where we provide them with um, fun and engaging uh, online volunteer events where uh, employees or students, depending on the case, will use their skills throughout a day to support one of our social enterprises. So that's what our platform uh, looks like. Our change makers, we don't charge change makers at all. We don't charge social enterprises that we work with because we believe that in order for these social enterprises to really scale, uh, one of their biggest challenges is what, what is fundraising. Um, so we don't believe we should uh, charge social enterprises. We should help them the best way we can. And we focus on the value proposition that is skills rather than money. And our revenue streams come from corporations. Um, so through our CSR uh, uh, schemes that, that we do with the social enterprises. Um, and this is also just to give an idea of our purpose. So we have it as a these six lines. So our purpose is to give you the power to change the world. We enable anyone anywhere to use their skills to support the cause that they care about. We connect change makers with social enterprises online so they so, so together they can address address the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. But what are the, uh, the United Nations 
sustainable development goals. According to a survey, only 17% of the population in the UK knew this. Um, but it's decided by the uh, United Nations General Assembly. It was decided in, uh, through a resolution in 2015. And these goals, we're supposed to, as a whole world, to achieve these goals by 2030. And all the member states of the United Nations unanimously um, voted in favor of this. Um, the only thing about the sustainable development goals is that they're not legally binding. So it can be very symbolic. You can see politicians or other famous people wearing um, the little circle uh, that represents the, the um, sustainable development goals. Um, but again, the impact is not always to be seen. So who is actually responsible for carrying out these um, sustainable development goals? Is it the governments who signed uh, the resolution and said, this is what we're going to do in the whole world, even though a lot of them don't even report back to the UN what their progress are. Certain countries are uh, working very actively with them. Sweden is one of them. A lot of municipalities in Sweden work with the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals in their everyday work whenever they think about their decisions. Certain states, again, Nordic states, might carry out some of these goals through um, the welfare state. So um, tax paid education or tax paid um, health care. Um, but it's a lot of responsibility to put on governments. So the other question would be, would it be international organizations like the UN or a supranational organization like the Union, European Union, who are taking some steps to sort of regulate CO2 and so on, but the, the power is limited and the impact is limited. Then there's the NGOs who are the classic example of sort of outsourcing the responsibility to a third party. And um, the problem with the NGOs is that they rely too much on public funding and private donations. So the public funding is even before COVID were cut off uh, more and more and more. And the NGOs are oftentimes too bureaucratic. It's good that they are tra transparent, but they're too bureaucratic and the impact that they make is unfortunately limited, meaning that we will not be able to reach the sustainable development goals by 2030 if we're relying on the governments, the international organizations and the NGOs together. What about the private sector? There's the corporate social responsibility from corporations. And um, that can help out a little bit, but a lot of companies are kind of in a jungle, not really knowing what, they're, what they have to do to make an impact. And oftentimes develop CSR programs that are not really making an impact, just costing a lot of money and time for companies, but results are limited. Then in the private sector, we also have I believe many of you, the social entrepreneurs. So what you could perhaps call a little bit the hybrid of an NGO and a company. But yeah, social enterprise, what can they do compared to an NGO, for instance? Because this is both the outside of government kind of, outside the political landscape kind of solutions. Um, but social enterprise, gain revenue, you can, uh, or generate revenue, you can get investments, you can scale something that the NGOs can't you operate like a business and your but the difference is that your purpose is the impact that you're making as a social enterprise so if you ask us if we make change in the future there's nothing called a social enterprise all businesses are automatically and naturally a social enterprise is making an impact is driven by its mission and we feel like this is the time also now to focus more on social enterprises because we have a new generations was the most socially conscious uh, generation ever. We we're also the most educated and most well-connected education ever. And we demand a change for the future. So we believe in transforming the systems and you are key players as social entrepreneurs, but also as change makers in making this happen so we can change the world and build a brighter future. Now I wanna talk a little bit about volunteering. So according to studies, um, 90% of Americans wants to volunteer, but only one in four do it. And there can be many reasons for that. One will be, for instance, it's inaccessible. The UK study says the benefits of volunteering is that it improves life satisfaction overall and overall health, and it's rewarding and also boosts your sense of social connection, which are all benefits. And these are sort of the classic uh, connotations that you have in volunteering that it feels good, you're making a change, it's rewarding for you personally, 
um, you feel like you're making some sort of change. But also the other traditional context in this, again, is inaccessible. It's difficult to find um, volunteering opportunities. It can often be, um, it has to be a specific place, maybe in your own city, uh, and it has to be according to their schedule. And it's hard to find the diff different opportunities. We want to solve that problem that we may change by providing a platform where all volunteering opportunities will will be. So you can only you only have to go to one place to find them. And social enterprise, for instance, will only have to go to one place to um, find volunteers or change makers, as we call them for them. Then there's the um, traditional uh, connotation again with the low skill. It's oftentimes you might help out in the local um, soup kitchen, for instance, or you might do some help with homework for uh, for uh, children who, who need it and those things are still good they're still making a change but it's still low skilled you're not using your expertise to really make a difference when you can really make a bigger difference if you for instance have a background in i don't know finance or web development or yeah it can also be marketing it can be anything that can make a bigger impact and then there's the low impact uh, aspect as well so you might not make a big difference when you're just in your local community and through the skills that you're using, you're not making a very big impact. Like everyone wants to change the world in some way and doing it in traditional volunteering ways is not really it. So we focus on change making. Uh, we want to make change making accessible again. So we fo focus on online skill volunteering. So volunteering can do from anywhere in the world. If you live in California, you can volunteer for a project in Europe somewhere, in Africa and Asia, Oceania and South America. It can be anywhere. It can also be in California itself. It's very high skill focused. So again, um, we focus on anything again from business development, finance, legal, um, web development, web design, graphic design, be anything if you can think of. Recently, we had an organization who were looking for an IP lawyer, which we happen to find in our um, in our um, community that we have. We have a community of more than twenty five thousand change makers from more than one hundred countries around the world, um, and we are we had someone who was looking for a chemical engineer um, for their um, for the work that they do with uh, working with insects as a new kind of food. And that was also something we happened to find. So it's, it's very interesting to see what kind of people are out there and how they can use their skills. So it's very high skilled. And then there's a uh, high impact because as a change maker, you can um, use your skills to help these social enterprises um, gain this revenue, gain this in investment and gain the scalability. So the impact that they, they're making can be even bigger and we can ultimately change the world and the system so what are the benefits for for change making so this goes out to the the people uh who want to use your skills but also to the social entrepreneurs to understand why would people volunteer their time to make a change so the benefit is that it's flexible uh first of all and a lot of our project that we make change is around between eight to a one between two to eight hours a week so you volunteer two trade hours a week of your time for something that you believe in. You can develop your soft skills and but also your hard skills. It depends a lot where you are in your life. A lot of the change makers we have are either university students or young professionals. We also have a lot of people who are senior who have worked 30 years in a specific sector. We had a lawyer at some point who thought, I've worked 30 years in the sector, but I've never made an impact. So now's the time for me to do it. So there's an opportunity to either develop both your soft and hard skills, or maybe just um, develop your soft skills by working in international teams uh, around the world. Um, you get to grow your network. You get to work directly with founders, which is really appealing. So you can get this experience where you can improve your CV if you are looking to do that. Either you are young or you have changed the path in your life and you want to focus on something else, there's a way to improve your CV. There's a way to also fill in gaps that you might have in your CV. So the last thing that we think, think is very beneficial is that all of this together, you have all the benefits, you're networking, you're developing your skills, but at the same time, you're changing the world because you're supporting an impactful organization. Because in the future, big corporations will have these problems that people are not going to want to work for them especially the younger generation want to think twice before starting working for a big corporations. You can choose anything. If you're highly skilled, you can choose to work anywhere. 
why will you work for some company where you're not making a difference? So social enterprises. I know this presentation goes a bit like back and forth between uh, social enterprises and change makers. Um, but now we're going a bit back to the social enterprises because as it was also stated in the description of the event, um, there's a question about assessing your need for change makers. So how do you figure out if you need them? Well, first, how many are you in your team? Maybe you're only one, you might be five. If you're only one, then there is also this, um, many people start their own uh, social enterprise, always have it as their baby. So it's very hard to let go of, um, of uh, or like give responsibilities to other people. Um, so a lot of people wear way too many hats. Uh, they sit down and write grant applications. They start to learn to code. They start to make their own graphic design when their skills might be in a totally different um, area where they can make the greatest impact. So it is thinking about how many hats are you wearing? And how many can you wear? And then is trusting that someone else can take the responsibility and do a great job. So figure out how many people are you and how many hats can you wear? What do you need to grow your impact? Where are you weak? Because you cannot be strong in everything. Is it, you have like a website somewhere, but it doesn't really look any good, but it's pretty essential for what you do. You need to find someone who can help with the web development. Or do you have the branding is off, but you kind of have the specific idea in your head on how to do it. A great graphic designer can help you make these um, thoughts and these um, ideas to life. Um, so this is the first way to, to figure out do I need change makers. Then there's your attracting the change makers. So of course, I would recommend any day that you use we make change to attract these change makers. And I'll get back to how to do that specifically. Um, we're attracting change makers. Uh, here is very important to think about the theory of change. You find you have a challenge in the world. There's a specific challenge you want to address. You have a great idea of what that is. You've looked into who else addresses this, what's already there. Once you have figured out um, the, the issue, then you have to look into the solution, figure out what are people already doing and where's my niche. So if you have a clear theory of change, that's very helpful to attract the right people. And then transparency in your organization, transparency, for instance, on your website, what do you do? What's your social impact? And how are you making the social impact? People, especially also young people, they love transparency. They want to see what's going on and they want to feel a part of it. So it's very important that you, that people need to be able to relate to your work. One of the things we think a lot about when we make change, because um, we look through all applications from social enterprise to make sure that they live up to uh, our values and their, their work aligns with the sustainable development goals. But we also want to look into, is this an organization that people would be inspired to support? That's something you have to keep in mind at all times. You might have a great mission, but the way you frame it, the way you, you, you appear has to also be more relatable and be inspirational. That attracts people. And if you have a strong mission, people want to support you because they want to, they have one, they have your cause as their own personal cause where they want to make a change. Then it, then it's fine to volunteer five, 10, or even more hours a week to support that cause. A lot of people are willing to do that. And we've seen that. So, so it's change price again, using image change. Again, we want to be the uh, place to go for um, everyone who wants to, uh, to, to get change makers because there are a lot of different platforms where you can find volunteers. We want to be uh, the one you go to so you don't have to worry about all the others. And again, our service is free and we have a very easy and smooth process. A lot of the times when people are looking for, a lot of the times when people are looking to, to find a volunteer, uh, and if, or if you go on any volunteering platform, you will find something that uh, looks almost like a job posting. Maybe two pages with lists of lists and lists of how much you require from this person. So it's almost applying for a job which nobody wants to do when it's a volunteering position. It's not because they are, they're maybe bad. It's just because it should be a smooth, um, smooth way to do it. So what we do and what makes us stand out is that 
we describe the organ when we, on our platform we describe the organization briefly like the, the challenge and their solution then we ask the simple question how can i help we quickly put we have different categories so it could be marketing and then the description wouldn't be longer than help uh, or we need support in developing a marketing strategy for this and this and this and then volunteer uh five five to six hours or something like four to six hours a week something like that people apply you the information you get from the about these people is um the name uh where they're uh based and um how many hours uh, a week or days that they have to, uh, that they can contribute to your project. So you get that idea. Um, then the skills that they have, they can even add other skills that they might think will be relevant for you. And then they will have their LinkedIn if they have one and their CV if they want to, and maybe both. It's easy to sort in people that way. If they didn't add any of that, it's not super appealing for you to reach out to them. Then they can write a small motivation for why they find, find your project interesting. And then the evaluation for us is um, pretty simple. What we recommend is that go through the motivations, watch the CVs, is this person worth reaching out to? Then you reach out, just write a personal quick email, see if they're up for a call and that's it. You can also, if you have a lot of people uh, applying because some projects maybe only need one or two uh, roles. We also have pro uh, projects where people were looking for 10 or 12 different kinds of people and um, we then recommend that you reach out to multiple and then you have to a come like one big call on Zoom, for instance, where everyone gets where you get to introduce what you do and you get to meet the people who are there. And then you can easily see who actually showed up. That's a good way to also save some time. Um, but going a bit back to the process, it's very easy and smooth. You become a member, you create a project that people can join, and you can also join a change day. Quickly, what a change day is, this is what we offer for companies, but we also do it every month for our change maker community. This is a um, four or five hours event that we do where people or social enterprise are matched with four or five change makers who have the skills that the social enterprise need. We had a day where the focus was on developing a, a, um, a social media campaign. And then we had four social enterprise uh, attend and they had four or five people in each team and they worked together for three hours and um, and yet, if they they presented what they have done, so what was the goal of the day? What did they do? What are the next steps? Then we do a matching process at the end with feedback forms, and those who have said they want to continue to work with the organization beyond the day, we match them the day after. And in most cases, people actually want to continue beyond the day. So that's also a way for you to meet people and get stuff done at the same time during the day. So that's what we have for social enterprise to create the project. You can join the change day, either with change makers, university students, or companies that we are working with. But how do you evaluate the people um, that you've maybe have interviewed uh, who are uh, uh, change makers? We have something called the PHE framework. Um, it's nothing fancy. It stands for passion, ability, and time. So it's interesting to figure out, okay, how passionate is this person about my cause, about what I do? and what's their ability and what's their time schedule like so they can fit into what I do. There might be different people you will meet. You might meet someone who is very passionate, but maybe just finished the university. So their abilities are there, but they haven't used them that much in practice, but they even have more time. That's a great person to bring aboard. It requires a little time to get them into it, but if they have the time and the passion, they're going to make make a big difference for you. Then there are some of the people who are, who are, who are pa passionate, but have the ability, but not so much time. Those people can still make a big difference for you because they have expertise that you can use. And well, I already covered the reaching out actually. So I'm not gonna, gonna go back to that one. So the volunteer engagement, let's say that you have people joined, you went through the whole process where we make change and people are now joining uh, as change makers, your organization. So the way we recommend volunteer engagement is pretty much to have clear roles and responsibility decided with the person uh, so they know what's my role in the organization and what are my responsibilities. So define tasks and deadlines. You maybe have a weekly call with a specific person to make sure they're engaged and you invite them to give, them, give their input as well. Because that's also what people want. They want to grow when they are a part 
of a social enterprise when they're volunteering their time. It's an opportunity for them to grow as well, uh, both uh, personally and professionally. So one thing that also really helps with this is having simple and responsive con communication. One thing we use a lot of WeMake Change, for instance, because we also have volunteers who are with us part-time, some people doing part of an internship, is um, we use Slack. We think Slack works well. And um, so it's being available there is having this um, team communication through Slack works super well for us, we think. So that change makers know where to go and who to ask whenever they have a question. And then it's just about being uh, just responsive so to make sure that these people are engaged. And then you make it fun and engaging. And that could be through maybe every month you have maybe a social thing. Or, uh, we also recommend that maybe you have this just weekly call again with, with them if, if they're working a lot of like independent tasks. Um, but make it a fun and engaging experience and give people the opportunity to grow. Give them the responsibility. Like give them the opportunity to let them swim and see <laughs> if they are able to swim or if they sink and then you step in and help them. Uh, but it's trying to go a bit away from these traditional connotations of, okay, I have a volunteer here. This volunteer is just going to do this one task uh, one hour on Monday and maybe one hour on Wednesday. That's it. Here it's much more dynamic. So there are a lot of cool opportunities to engage with these uh, surgeon writers and really grow your impact and really perhaps get, gain a, a colleague for the future because we do have example of people who joined volunteering at first, but um, they were very engaged with the causes and really cared about them. They really brought amazing skills to the table. And once the social enterprise was able to uh, gain revenue and investment, they uh, had the opportunity to hire these people. So they <laughs> got themselves into a job as well. Um, so there are a lot of great uh, ways to engage with vol uh, volunteers or change makers that they call them. Again, going to go a bit back to now I'm going on to the change makers. So the people are interested in volunteering. Again, it's a flexible way for you to, um, or it's flexible for, for your schedule. For instance, if you're a university student, certain times you have finals, you don't have a lot of time. Other times you might even have one or two days a week where you can use your skills for a cost that you care about. If you're working full-time already, but looking to do something on the side, it still works if it's five hours a week, especially if you have a, if you're working with a social entrepreneur who is very engaging, good at responding and having, who has clear tasks for you and clear deadlines and very defined roles. Um, but again, you can develop your soft skills and hard skills. You can get the experience, you can improve your CV, fill any gaps that might there, you can grow your network and you can change the world. And again, how do you get started if you're a change maker? We have the PhD framework, but we reverse it a little bit when we talk about the change makers. So we instead we call this a CST. So causes, skills, and time. So you figure out what are the causes that I really care about. Everyone cares about something. And it can be climate change, it can be quality education, it can be gender equality, it can be anything. And if you're unsure, you can always look at the sustainable development goals. You can even go to globalgoals.org and look specifically at the targets because the 17 goals in total, there are 169 targets within those goals. So there are a lot of inspirations to find there when you're, if you're a bit unsure about what you really care about. Um, then you figure out what are, your, what are my skills? What can I contribute with? Or what am I developing uh, that can be useful that I wanna use in practice? And then lastly, what are the times that I can give every week to make a change? And um, it's very simple. It's a simple exercise that you can do after this webinar, for instance, if you were like, oh, I'm ready to do this, I am ready to make a change. Um, and of course, use We Make Change, create a profile, get our weekly email every Monday about new projects that you could join, uh, change dates you could apply to, uh, or just like look through our website on the project page. Um, there are tons of, there are, at the moment we have 150 projects that you can apply to for all over the world, and we're looking to grow all the time. And again, if you're a social enterprise at this call, really want to encourage you to sign up again it's free of charge what we do so i'm going to give you some case studies um of some of the like members that we have so here this first one the circle is called sphere 
is based in Sweden and it's based, um, they're going to launch at the end of this month, actually. They signed up with us in November. I remember I was actually reaching out to, to, to the founder on, uh, on LinkedIn because I found out and I thought it was very cool. It's, it's an app that's focused on women's safety. So they're building a community of women, verified women um, who um, can sort of um, sh share where they are if they're walking, walking home. Uh, late at night and they don't feel safe because they did a survey saying that and it said that 92 percent of the women participating did not feel safe going home alone at the evening in the evening so they are building a a way to uh, spread awareness to the people that you know uh, so you can share when you're going home and if you suddenly don't feel safe they're building partnership with restaurants cafes uh, shops and so on that can be safe spaces for people to go if they don't feel safe walking Home. And there's one example, one of the persons who joined, um, who also redesigned the logo, uh, joined just doing branding part-time during the week, but ended up spending more time and actually joined as a founding member. So very exciting to see what's going on there. They also had so much interest from changemakers that they couldn't onboard the amount of people who applied. So they have, they have 25 people from around different countries, mainly in Europe, who are helping doing translations so that the app can be launched in more than just one country. Uh, so that's one example. Then other examples are this other circle is called Extincts. Um, this is a, an app um, that's a video game for children, teaching children about endangered uh, species. So you can collect them uh, in the game and all the money you make in the game are being donated to, uh, to organizations around the world who are trying to tackle this pro problem with the uh, species dying out. Um, so that's another example of a social enterprise we're working with. Then there's one called Era 92, which is based in Uganda. And um, it's a creative agency. So they, the founder is actually from one of the slums near Kampala. And he somehow got his hand on a computer when he was young through a family member and he started using it. And then he taught himself how to, how to use it and use creative programs. So his goal was to create a social enterprise where you could get people from the slums and teach them about digital skills so they can find sustainable work for themselves. And he's been very successful at this. And the people who are the amount or the revenue that they make is also reinvested into local projects that are teaching people skills so they can get out of poverty. So that's also an example just of a social enterprise, but one social enterprise that we're supporting. Um, they also participated in one of our change days, one of the or they wanted to help with strategy to reach more corporate uh, companies. So we had change makers from mainly from the UK in this case, who helped them build a strategy on that. We have pizza, uh, or pizza is based in uh, Mexico city. And they are also a social impact social enterprise where they focus on getting people off the street and into employability. Uh, so they are disguised as a pizzeria and they create um, sustainable work through um, pizza baking to get people off the street in sustainable work. Another example is Tech Inclusion UK, uh, based in the UK, started right after the COVID lockdown last year. And um, the problem was that a lot of children had to stay home and be homeschooled online. But there are a lot of children in the UK who do not have access to a tech device and they cannot get the education then, so they're missing out. So they're creating a circular economy where people can donate their own devices and then they repair them and uh, redistribute them to the schools that they're working with. I remember one of the change makers who were working there was being furloughed. So she was still getting paid, but just working from home and she, or not even working, she was just home. So she was looking for to do something else. So she was volunteering for them, doing research, uh, enhancing skills, working with skills she had, learned in universities that she didn't have the chance yet to use in practice. And she thought it was a great way to use her time being furloughed, learning new things and networking. Before I do the change days one, I wanna just mention Rojo that we have, which is actually based here in California. And um, they are selling products made by women artisans in Kenya. And um, so they're creating sustainable work in Kenya and creating work for women and making sure that the supply chain that they have is as sustainable as possible so people are getting paid for what they do and not being exploited and at the same time promoting the work that they do in the united states filling in where the markets uh, needs this 
Lastly, I'm going to show you a video of what a change day is, because that's a case study of how a volunteer events look. And these are some events that you have the opportunity to take part of. If you're a member of We Make Change as a social enterprise, but also as a change maker, um, so you can get support throughout a whole day and get introduced to new people. So I'm just going to find that little video. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, sharing screen. Yeah, I see I cannot necessarily optimize it for video clip, but I'll try it and let's see how much, it, how it goes. Hello everyone and welcome to the No Poverty Change Day. I'd like to invite Moja uh, to be the first to just give a, a quick two minute introduction. So good hygiene should be a given and it shouldn't be a barrier to attending school. Uh, my name is Tom and this is Alyssa. So now over to ERA92. ERA92 is a social enterprise uh, that trains and employs young adults in design, arts and technology. But now you're going to be sent into your breakout rooms in your teams. Change makers, get ready to give one minute introductions to yourself, uh, your background, uh, what you're looking to, what skills you have to bring to today. And then you can start getting change making. First slide is our mailer. So this is kind of a mailer template. So we are going to push the mailer at 10 a.m. on Wednesday because this is the time that we have seen that is most effective. And we kind of went over um, a few different areas, identifying our audiences. Here are just the goals that we were going through today. I really wanted to review our existing email marketing strategies, develop a strategy for future email campaigns. Um, and talk about ways in which we can grow our email list. The biggest problem was how do we get our story, our message to the globe. Thank you to the amazing change makers that are here. Huge thank you to the social enterprises. Three, two, one, go. That was a change day. Hopefully you could see some of it. And um, that concludes my presentation.